you made it in the crock pot. It's got like andouille sausage, chicken, carrots in it, a bunch of tomato and tomato based things, a little spice. Had that over some brown rice. Pretty delicious. That sounds like quite a decent meal. And brown rice is also better than white rice, uh, believe it or not. Uh, I think it tastes better too. Oh, yeah, it totally does. It mixes better with the different sauces. Yeah, especially with like a waterier meal. So if you don't know already, I got Nutty Pizza here with me this week. One of the um, top teams in our D2L EST Sunday this year. Number two, actually, only behind Riles. Uh, I'm going to be asking him a couple questions about his team this week. So first question is kind of talking about Dark Dota. Describe Your games are described as the Dark Dota show, especially this last week he did very well. Do you have any strategies revolving around him? No, that's the that's the great thing about drafting a player like Dark is he's just really versatile, can play like anything in the mid lane. Um, last Sunday in uh, the regular season, or last season in Sunday, he went 16-0 and playing 16 different heroes. So it's really great having uh, a player like him on your team because it makes your drafting a lot more flexible. Um, the way it usually works is, you know, I've got a, a plan uh, and a handful of heroes that we're looking at for each player um, and, we, you know, prioritize certain roles based upon the position that you have in the draft. And at some point during that process, as we're going through it, Dark will be like, I want this hero. And then you just pick that hero and usually win the game. So your picks for him are completely based off of what he wants? Yeah, for the most part. Um, we'll we'll give like input on it if we're waffling between a couple things or if he's not like making a suggestion. And we're getting to the point where we're trying to decide between like the the carry and the mid. We'll be throwing out ideas for different things, so he'll respond to those, um, and he'll like our suggestions sometimes. But a lot of the times he's like, "I feel like this hero is good right now," and then we talk about it and we all agree, so we pick the hero. All right, moving on to your second player, second pick, I believe, is uh, Johan. Plays a lot of disruptor in AA for you guys. Are those just comfort heroes, or are they you think they're just good picks? Yeah, he was our sixth pick, actually. Um, he is uh, incredibly good on both of those heroes. Um, Redondo called out in his scouting of him his 65% AA win rate, and that was something that I found uh, cool as well, because that hero, he just, if you can open up with him, like, he kind of neuters a lot of the things your opponents might want to do, especially in this meta. It seems like it's based a lot of, around a lot of big tanky heroes with high regen. Um, but uh, the draft was before this meta, but I think AA is just a good hero in general. Um, good AoE team fight, and I like AoE team fight heroes. So you're saying teams against you, they should just ban AA? Uh, if they want. All right, that's a that's a decent AA win rate too. It's probably probably it's like 65 worth plus. And next, you got Wise. And he's been spamming a lot of Rubik lately. I think he has 237 games in total. Might be more because I got that stat a couple days ago. Why do you draft any other heroes other than Rubik for him? Well, a lot of the times the Rubik gets banned because he's he's known for playing the Rubik. Um, but there are other heroes that uh, are just meta right now that he plays well. Um, I like a four position that can initiate. So like Tusk or Clock are also good fits. Uh, and he plays both of those pretty well. So when drafting for both of your supports, do you focus on trying to get a good combo between the two, or is it just separately? Um, it it kind of depends. I like to find synergy, and luckily, uh, when I was I did a decent amount of research before the draft, and I tried to draft players in each. So I wanted a mid player first, carry player second, a four player third, and then my last two guys to play five. So when I I knew that order, so I tried to target people in about the rounds that I thought they would go that wanted to play those roles. So when it comes to them, I was looking at people that wanted to play that role anyway, and then I was also checking the heroes that they played the most games of, um, and I liked the heroes that all of my supports played because uh, they work well together. A lot of good kind of wombo combo, team fighty alt things. Um, so I knew that if I got uh, those players that we'd be able to put something together in the drafts that people would feel comfortable with. Okay. And we also talked a little bit about your fifth pick there, which is Estrati, if I'm not mistaken this time. Yep. Um, does your pick strategy differ from your other five player? Um, unfortunately, his five heroes are a little bit more boring, so I always feel bad picking them for him, like the Ogres. Um, 
but he the, the other pl- heroes he really wants to play are like silencer and visage and it's just kind of hard to fit those in early in the draft we did do a scrim with the silencer where we had the luxury of picking our fifth position in the second round of picks um and it was a good fit i forget exactly what they had but he he did all right on it i think we ended up lo- losing that uh particular game but um unfortunately with where we have to we like to pick our, our support players sometimes he gets stuck on the not mo- not so much fun heroes Okay, and I noticed he played a bit of uh, Witch Doctor for you guys as well in your officials, or at least the uh, the four officials he has played in. Mm-hmm. Is that just another hero he's comfortable with playing? Uh, that's a hero that I just like a lot right now, and I think most people can can throw the coconut pretty good. I I like that description for it. All right. So last week you ended up getting like in two games in a row which in this patch is pretty surprising how did you end up getting that for gg mode um well i think we got first pick against or no we we chose first pick the first game um and i'm i'm not above picking cheesy or op or meta stuff to win um i i know uh zamo's team was going to be a good opponent so i was willing to cheese them if they would let it through and then I don't know why they didn't ban it the second game, especially when we did the exact same bans. Um, they said it wasn't super effective the first game, and the first game was definitely more the the dark show on the OD. But uh, I think if you look at the tower damage for that game, ninety percent plus of it probably was from our Lycan. Yeah, it does look like it. I have the game up here, and he did quite a decent bit of damage. And you were right about dark going. I believe he didn't have a single death in the first game, only one in the second game. So one in the... Yeah, he was 16 or 18 and 0 or something on that first game. Something like that. Got a decent start. Uh, and I actually did forget to bring this up. His average for deaths and wins is one per game, and his average in losses is six. Is Do you think him getting a good start has a big impact on the outcome of your games? Uh, he catches up well when he doesn't get a good start the biggest thing that has an impact on our his his performance in the games that we end up losing is fucking sniper so so as as long as that hero is not in the game it's usually pretty okay another strategy to defeat nutty pizza for those of you out there pick sniper against him oh we ban for we first phase ban sniper a lot all right that's probably just solving a lot of your issues there then so we're going to move on to your final player, which is you yourself. What do you think of the offlane meta currently, and what's your go-to offlaner? Um, I feel like it's been hard recently. Uh, I can't imagine that Ice Frog thought the way that that lane should be played should be like pulling creeps back uh, through their jungle and into your tower. Um, but Dota changes. Uh, right now it's just kind of crappy. Um, and I figured if there's one lane to sack, that's that's the lane to do it. So I where I put myself. Uh, but go to offlaner. Um, my favorite is still Faceless Void, even though he's not the most meta hero. Um, he's a hero that I always feel good about, like not dying in the laning stage on. Which right now is, you know, I don't even know how bad dying is in the offlane, but I just it, you feel bad when you do it like between six and twelve times a game. Yeah, and you you actually picked Faceless Void the first game this last week. It looks like. Yeah. Uh, I they had banned a ton of off laners, um, and I thought it was pretty decent with the the OD and the Witch Doctor, even though it didn't have great synergy with the the Tusker Lycan. All right, thank you so much for answering the questions. We're gonna move on no now problem. to a Dota Buff quiz, which you told me you did research for. I guess we'll see. I don't know if I made these too hard because of that, but we'll we'll see again. We'll see what happens. I didn't know the answers to a lot of like the basic questions that you asked your other audience, so I felt like I had to be somewhere in the ballpark. So don't go, t- don't go too hard. Okay, most people have been in ballpark, like range of terms of like how many hours they've played. So I'm sure you'll do fine. So first question: What is your highest GPM? This is going to be the record GPM. Oh man, I feel like. I wouldn't be surprised if there's one in the 900 to 1,000 range on Alchemist. There was a period of time where I tried to play a lot of Alchemist. I wasn't very good at it, though. It was Alchemist with 1,066. Nice. I don't know when the game was, to to quote that stat, but it was an Alchemist. Okay, and speaking of GPM, second question, what is your current average GPM, GPM across all games, including support games? 
Oh, I did look at that one. It was like 409 or something. Exactly. Which I thought was pretty high because I normally play off lane or support, which aren't typically the the richest roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got that one exactly. Research pays off. Next, who is your most played hero and what item do you end the game with the most? Oh, it's got to be CM for sure. Um, but just by a little bit over Void. And I'm going to guess Wand. It is Tranquils. Tranquils, yeah, that makes sense. And I believe it was like five games over somebody else, not Void, but some other hero like Elder Titan or something like that. No, oh, it's definitely not Elder okay. Titan. <laughs> I'm just throwing guesses out there, but I don't think it was a Void. Well, I'll have to look that up after. All right, fourth question. What is the most winningest day of Dota you've had? Oh, man. Um, it's going to be your like most amount of wins you've gotten in a day. A single day. Yeah, a single day. Ten? Uh, it is nine. So if nine, we're going by nine. Price is Right rules, you lose. But since you're only nine. one away and we're not going by <laughs> Price is Right rules, we'll give you that one. All right, last Thank you. final question. Most CS in a game? And bonus question, what was the next highest value? Um, I think this was from a sniper game, and I remember the sniper game. Um, what was the first question? How much CS? Yes. Like, total assets? It was sniper game. Uh, a thousand? A thousand one hundred. Or, yeah, 1.1k, actually. Yeah. I remember that game. We were mega, and they we couldn't lose, and they couldn't win. And I just got tired of it, and I ran down mid. I got hooked by a pudge. With like, three rapiers or something. Yeah, I noticed you only had four items at the very end, and this was like an hour and 15 minute game or something like that. Yeah, there were rapiers lost. All right, next highest CS value. Next highest? I bet it falls off a lot. Uh, 700? A little bit lower than that. I'll give you another guess, because it does fall off quite a bit. 550. Uh, 100 more. Or 100 less. It's 443. Oh, God. On a Legion commander. What? How does that even happen? So my guess is that this is back before Dota buff um, was able to track roles. My guess is that this happened in the jungle somehow. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that there was, there's been some jung jung le jungle Legion commander in my past. All right. Thanks, Naughty Pizza, for coming on. We got the matchup of the week coming up. A matchup probably of the season. We only got three weeks left, and this is the the big one. Riles versus Nutty Pizza. You got anything, any words for that? No, I think it'll be fun. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of trash talk, uh, either by, by Dark or Riles, no matter which way it goes. Should be a good one. Thanks so much for coming on, Nutty Pizza. No problem. Thanks for having me.